Another gift of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. He was so powerful, we had made mention that he had the power to subject all the jinn kind of the time and he did it. And he used them in many different ways, some of them to build, to build buildings, to make huge cauldrons and pots and to do so many other things, to build places of worship. And Sulaiman alayhi salam, when he stood with his stick, they were frightened, they were scared of him. What did he do? He gathered all the books of magic, all the books of magic, because magic was very rife at the time. People were engaging in the worship of the devil. People were worshiping the jinn kind. Sulaiman alayhi salam got hold of the jinn kind, subjected them to his command, gathered all the books of magic, and where was the safest place to put all these books? Under his throne. So he placed them under his throne. He would be seated. Nobody touched these books and the magic stopped. Now when that happened, there was a problem because they saw Sulaiman alayhi salam instruct the wind. It would move so fast. A month's journey covered in the morning. Another month's journey covered in the afternoon. Solely because the wind begins to blow, it lifts you off and it takes you away. This would actually take you very safely by the instruction of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. So they began to accuse him of magic and they started saying, no, this man, he took all these books, he's taken everything, he's got control of the jinn and he is the magician. He is the big magician and he is now displaying all his authority and his power. Imagine he got the palace of Bilqis within a split second to be shifted from Sheba all the way to where he was intact and he renovated it within split seconds and he built another palace next to it within split seconds. So when they started blaming him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies his name in the Quran. Sulaiman did not disbelieve. What does Allah mean did not disbelieve? Anyone who engages in magic or who seeks magical, meaning something magical from someone, they have lost their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and entered into the fold of kufr. So Allah is saying Sulaiman did not disbelieve, but the devils disbelieved. They were the ones who were teaching people magic. And now there was a question. Well, what is the difference between a miracle of a Nabi and magic? People didn't know because they only knew now one thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two angels with a certain idea. What was the idea? You people really want to know what is the difference between magic and the miracle of a Nabi? We will show you. You've seen the miracles out there. Now we will show you what magic is all about on condition that you consider it a test from Allah and you don't engage in it. So Allah says, they came down with magic, two angels, Harut and Marut, where? In a place called Babil or Babylon. And the, the reason they had to teach a few people what it was all about was so that they could distinguish between the miracle of a Nabi and the magic of magicians. When they were taught, they knew very well that this is magic and what Sulaiman alayhi salam has come with is the miracle of a Nabi. Just like before them, if you take a look at Musa alayhi salam, he was a Nabi. He had miracle with him. And when the magicians who were masters of magic came, when they laid or when they threw their ropes and their sticks, they knew immediately upon seeing what Musa alayhi salam came with, that what we did is magic and what he did is a miracle. They immediately fell prostrate. Why did Harut and Marut come down? They came down to teach the people something that they wanted to know to be able to distinguish between two matters. Sadly, when they taught a few people this magic, everyone they taught, they told them something. Look, we are teaching it to you as a test. So do not disbelieve by using this to cast magical spells upon people. If you do that, you will lose your Iman, you will enter the fold of Kufr and disbelief. Now, later on, these people started using this magic. Why? When they became jealous of one another and they seen a married couple very happily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they started practicing what they were taught, how to split between a husband and a wife. So the magic, one of the first magical spells that people cast very easily is to split husband and wife. So you find this one turns that in that direction, that one turns in the other direction because of a spell that has been cast. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are indeed learning that 
which does not help them in any way. In fact, it harms them. And they are teaching it and learning it. Subhanallah. Allah says, they will not be able to harm anybody except by the permission of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They knew that what they are purchasing, the deal that they are making, will render them in such a condition in the Akhirah that they won't have any portion left for them in the Akhirah. If you take a look at Babylon, up to this day, it is the headquarters of magic. There are people, whether they belong to the Illuminati or whether they belong to the Freemasons, part of the same thing, who worship the devil completely. And the devil tells them, we will give you two things, power and kingdom together with everlasting life. And this is the same promise that Iblis made to Adam, our forefather, meaning the first human being. The same promise when he told him eat from the forbidden fruit. He said two things. What is it? You will live forever, which means you will be illuminated as they call themselves now the Illuminati. Allah protect us. And not only that, you will have authority and kingdom and you will have so much control and you will have the power and all the ownership. And that's what people want to this day. If someone told you, look, I can make you reach in five minutes. There's no quick money. If it comes quick, it goes quick. And if it comes quick in a wrong manner, it will go with a lot of regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May he make us from those who earn halal sustenance. The seat of magic is in one of two places. You find it in Egypt where the pyramids are because there was a lot of magic at the time of Pharaoh and he depended on the magicians and he himself considered himself a god. So they worship him and so you have the annual festivals at the pyramids to this day where all the pop stars and everyone who worships the devil go there once per year and they continue. And believe me, there are so many people who are engaged in this devil worshipping because it makes them feel strong, feel powerful. And the day Allah's punishment comes, shaitan runs away. That's in the Quran. The second seat of magic is Babylon. To this day, there are people who visit. There are people who sacrifice. What shaitan does, he asks a person to do something very dirty. People urinate on revelation. People then use the words of revelation to cleanse themselves after. Thereafter, they get this power and their face changes. All of them who worship the devil, their faces begin to become extremely sharp featured, very scary with a double eyed look in their eyes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that those are the devil worshippers. And there are signs that you will see in them when they speak, no spirituality in the face. Shaitan will give him some information, not of the unseen, but some information of the past for a shaitan or a jinn to tell us what happened in the past is not difficult, but they will tell you one truth and 99 false. So they blame the people of your family for having done magic on you, yet they themselves are pinching a nerve. So what will happen is the jinn knows in your body exactly which nerve is pinched. He will go in, he knows, he will find out. When he comes out, he says, okay, they feel better. They woke up, the nerve is unpinched. Why? Shaitan did it for them. He unpinched it. But medicine couldn't do that. This is why we said, if a person wants to worship the devil, he will see results, definitely. Even in Christianity and Judaism, there are no immediate miracles. You need to pray to God. If anyone comes to you with a miracle where they put their hand on your head, you hear them uttering mumbo jumbo. They call it dialects, languages. They utter the words, worshipping the devil. They utter words that they themselves don't understand sometimes. And the problem is solved. You find a person opening their eyes after they were blind of 20 years. And people say, Hallelujah, Astaghfirullah. Not knowing it's the worshipping of the devil, the devil himself, he will solve your problem, but you won't get very far. Because when you get to your Lord, he will tell you, Allahu Akbar. On that day, shaitan will say, look, I promised you something which was false. And Allah promised you a true promise, but you decided to come towards me. Shaitan says, I had no authority over you. I just called you towards something that was a little bit desirous to your lusts and to what you wanted inside. And you suddenly ran towards me, leaving your creator on one side. And Shaitan says, today I am free from you. In fact, I fear the Lord of the world, but I just wanted to prove a point to you. Look at Shaitan. This is the issue of magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what an evil way of selling themselves. They sold themselves to the devil. And this is why King Solomon's minds are spoken about. And this is why the Temple of Solomon is spoken about. May Allah's peace be upon Sulaiman. His intention was brilliant. 
He in fact abandoned everything, but he had all the books under his throne. They were there. And when Harut and Marut came and taught these people all these items, they warned them, if you engage in this, you will lose your faith in the, in the Lord of the worlds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Sulaiman did not disbelieve, but the devils disbelieved. They were the ones who were teaching people magic.